fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. That's right, guys. And today we are having another comic book review. And today we are talking about DC's new Larflees issue number one. That's right, guys. Uh, a lot of people are fans of Larflees just because of the fact that he's always mine, mine, mine. Everything's mine. I'm greedy. I'm a greedy son of a bitch. And a lot of people are probably picking up this issue to see where can this title actually go? How deep can we go? How much of a character can we develop out of Larflees? Uh, it will be interesting to see. And it's still yet to be determined after reading this issue. Because basically what this issue is, is a origin tale of where he came from, how he was born. And it was quite humorous. Um... It was like slapsticky, uh, things like that. But the, the writer is Keith Giffen, and the artist is, uh, his name is um, uh, J.M. Demetis. Or no, that's the script. I'm trying to see the actual artist in here. Scott Collins. Uh, anyway, this book was so interesting. It was and weird at the same time. It's just like, I don't know. It had like some dark humor or slapstick humor. And the art is, is definitely way cartoony. It's something that you'll see uh, from a cartoon. Uh, for instance, you've got this right here. Or Flea's just sitting there yelling at his butler. Um, and it kind of goes on and on. It's really exaggerative. Um, there's just a lot of humor in here. Um, and what this book is about is they're at the brink of the universe and his his power battery or his energy is going to run out in like 15 minutes and so nothing better but to talk about your origin or your story of where you came from and it, it it's quickly you know gets interrupted by his butler coming in here and saying oh this is boring i don't want to hear this again and hey can we hear you about this later on and as he's telling his story but as the character uh, of larflees it's he's he's selfish and the butler's the only thing he has, and if he wants to tell his story, he's going to tell his story, on the brink of extinction or not. Um, it is pretty pretty funny, but it goes into a story about how he was born, and he just gets plopped out into a field, and you're just like, okay. And his mom is just basically dragging him along by the umbilical cord, and he's crying. Uh, you get to witness his birth like that. You get to witness the, the destruction of of his planet on how it was taken over but it was nothing it wasn't like depressing in any way because everything was was he's talking in the third person and how um how most of his story may have been false like he's like oh it's only half true and and stuff like that but it tells you how he escaped from slavery and how he went through a mine shaft and you know went into battle against the manhunters and how he found the orange light and the orange lantern and and uh, all kinds of things like that and uh, it's just how he grabbed it. It was just interesting. It's just so like dark and like cartoony. It's weird and it's totally different from the other Green Lanterns. It's completely different. Uh, here is more of this artwork uh, how he became the uh, orange lantern and he's just again talking in the third person and he has to battle this dog creature. You know, and uh, just weird zany stuff, and he gets eaten, and the next thing you see is the the dog creature gets splatted all over the place, and and this is uh, you know, this is the creature that he's gonna have to battle now, and uh, he's the uh, he's the Lord of the Hunt. <laughs> I don't I don't even know. Uh, just weird, and uh, all he sees that is he wants to do battle against this guy because there's lots of treasure, lots and lots of treasure. And his little butler is just like, uh, are you interested in me? Are you interested in uh, my uh, my references? And you're like, okay. So it's like, what is this? This is just so weird and out there. Uh, very humorous, very slapstick, very cartoony, uh, interesting. And then you see coming soon is the revolt of the Orange Lanterns. And that looks interesting. Um, I don't have a real verdict on this. I, it's just so weird. Um, 
I don't know. <laughs> it's just so different. Um, it's just interesting to see Larflees in a different environment beyond the Green Lanterns uh, in his own element. Where it goes from here, it's yet to be determined. Um, it's funny to see his humor, but can the humor get old eventually? I don't know. And will they try too hard with it? Uh, that is my question. Um, it's it's just interesting tale. I don't I don't know what else to say about it, but it will be interesting to see what the stories are entailed. I'm, I was like almost speechless after reading this issue. Um, I don't know. So for that matter, I'm going to give it, for now, a 3 out of 5. It was just okay for me. But I'm leaning to keep picking it up because I am interesting. I am interested to see what the stories are entailed for Lord of Fleas. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm sorry if this review is kind of weird, but I'm kind of lost for words on this issue. It, again, it's an origin tale. Uh, you get to see where he came from. It's just the art was weird and Larflees was weird for me. I, I don't know. So with that being said, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. And I'm going to buy more issues. And I'm going to see where it goes from here. So guys, tell me your comments on this. Did you read this? Did you find it interesting? Was it weird for you as it was for me? It was like a dark Saturday morning cartoon, I guess. I don't know. And I was like a 5-year-old kid just like this. like kind of scarred a little bit so I don't know but um, give me your thoughts on this again the three out of five for me and uh, guys thanks for watching comic book corner 2.0 and this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off and I'll see you guys real soon take care